Hi, my name is Howard Jones and welcome back to my online painting channel. In this series that I've entitled Loose Style Just Do It, um, I start with uh, what I consider to be the five essential things you might need to change in order to paint in the loose style. But think of these um, Just Do It sessions as like mini workshops, if you like. A place that you can come and go to suit you. Um, a sort of drop-in, drop-out type sort of situation. So when a problem arises for you, um, perhaps between us we can iron those problems out. Um, so let's get started in the first one. Uh, let's have a look at those five essential changes that you might have to make. So let's kick this off with probably the most important change you can make uh, in order to paint in the loose style. And that is to move to tube paints. Um, over here I've got my old palettes that I'd use uh, for field sketches, dried out old paint, but great for small, small quick sketches. But tube paints are the way to go. Um, you can um, pick up large amounts of um, juicy paint uh, in volume very quickly and when you're working in the loose style you really do need to have access to a lot of rich paint. Next on the list is brushes. So the first thing you'll notice when you have a look at these brushes is probably the size. Uh, to give you some sort of scale that red brush, red handle brush on the left is a one inch flat this is a shape making brush. The uh, neighbouring brushes, the one with the clear handle and the black ferrule there is a wash brush which holds a lot more paint and water. Big brushes, that's the way to go. It's, it's another bit, a bit of a game changer. So it's to scale of course. You probably wouldn't be using the bigger of these which is on the end with the black handle there which is one and a half inch uh, hog brush. Uh, it's actually an oil painter's brush, but I find them fantastic for loose style watercolour. Um, but you d you probably wouldn't be using that on a piece of paper, watercolour paper, less than 15 by 11 inches. So I'll talk about upping the scale of your paper a bit later. These are mop brushes, wonderful brushes, very expressive brushes. They hold a heck of a lot of paint and water. They're in large sizes. Um, moving down here to my only two small brushes really and that is a, a size 6 round synthetic with a very good point uh, and the one on the very end there is a number 2 size rigger brush. My third item is this, it's more of a technique issue and that is learning to use the belly of the brush. I've pointed it out here uh, with my little piece of card and arrow. Um, the brain wants to pick up pens, uh, sorry, brushes as though we're holding pens, sort of hold them down by the ferrule and choke the life out of them. But if you can pick the brush up, as I'm doing here, thumb on one side, two or three fingers on the other, you actually can see the full length of the handle on the opposite side. You can therefore push this up against the surface of the watercolour paper, allowing you to skim over the surface of the paper. It takes a bit of getting used to, uh, as I say, because the hand wants to turn it round. So now let's look at changes four and five on the list. Um, I'm going to show you these sort of both together. I'm holding the brush as we've just mentioned. Um, and change four is working at arm's length. Um, I don't mean that you should stand there um, or even sit there because you can sit there and do this too um, if you position yourself at the right distance from your uh, from your paper, from your surface. But there should probably, for comfort's sake, be a, a slight bend in, in your elbow. Um, this prevents us from working from the wrist. You get a far more, a far better gesture, I suppose, in the brush stroke by working um, using the entire length of your arm. There's benefit to um, working from the wrist when you get to the detail sections, of course, in your paintings. As you get towards the end, you're bound to sort of move in a bit, tighten up, um, and the and the and paint from the wrist more with the smaller brushes. 
but these early stages, which is really where the loose style is, is achieved, um, relies on probably all five of these changes that we've been talking about. So um, the quick pickup of rich paint, um, the delivery of um, by large brushes, uh, and then uh, the belly, which is then leads you on to the belly of the brush using the belly of the brush which gives you a very different mark it gives you that broken staccato sort of effect by using the belly of the brush and then working at arm's length uh, it's it's something that needs uh, getting used to admittedly um, but after a while it becomes very very natural and you wonder how you sort of painted any other way before that uh, and the scaling up, uh, if you can, move up for a while to something about 22 by 15 inches. Here's a useful tip. Um, what you're seeing me working on here is wallpaper lining paper. It's incredibly cheap. I think you pay about £8 for 30 metres of the stuff. I'm not suggesting for one second that you uh, try turning out your masterpieces on this paper, but given that there's a lot of um, so-called, you know, sort of practice watercolour papers on the market, um, I, personally I'd, I'd much prefer to work on this stuff any day. So give it a go. And when materials aren't expensive, it's funny how it has the habit of, uh, or the, the effect of you not getting too precious. And when you're not feeling too precious, do you know, that's when you paint your best work. So it's all kidology. <laughs> I'm just skimming, see the belly of the brush here, just skimming over this area to create a sort of hedgerow. Um, side of the brush, that's a mop brush that I'm using. And within this little demonstration here, you can see the different techniques, the three basic techniques there. The delivery of rich paint, which is sort of what I'm doing now. Handle of the brush, which I've been doing, um, dragging down uh, rich paint. Um, again, only the tube paints will allow, will allow you to do that. And then the skimming effect, the zip in over the surface of the belly of the brush. So I hope you uh, I hope this inspires you or whets your appetite to give this a go. Leave your comments by all means uh, underneath. Um, please subscribe. It really does make a difference to me. Uh, and we'll probably just finish this off now with a few of my recent watercolour paintings. Uh, maybe you'd like to sort of study them and uh, see if you can spot where I've delivered the rich colours. Uh, and where I've done perhaps the more detailed um, work. Thanks for joining me and see you soon.